Cari amici sportivi, welcome yet to another edition of the Milan Weekly Podcast. Here we talk uh, everything Milan, Serie A, upcoming Europa League. Uh, we got the finally the schedule of Coppa Italia. And yes, well, we're not professionals. Nor do we pretend to be. Stevie P, Vinny T, faithfully, what is this week, 177? What, what do you got over there? Milan Club Philly. Uh, a, a fellow donor and a fellow Milanista. Thank you to David Fante for this beautiful, beautiful scarf. And thank you for his donation as well to, to, to the cause. Uh, yes, Steve. You know, but when people are just going to listen to us, they're not going to see you do all these shenanigans. and um, the video. You know what? Uh, first of all, we would like to say we are in awe. Thank you so very much to every single buddy that donated to the cause. Donated to, I don't know if they're donating for, you know, for the kids and giving these toy and food drive or they're donating to see Steve shirtless. Besides the fact, right, we are so far... Steve, uh, uh, did we reach $700? Are we at $700? I think, with cool, the last cool. $20, I think with the last $20. And um, even my aunt. My yeah. aunt that slips me a $20 at church. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. She's like, that's for that's for the foundation, right? They do for, for, so, n- number one, uh, my aunt, my aunt I got. She's, uh, she, she, she's number one in our books. And uh, do, do you want to go say a special thank you to everybody? You just said thank you to everybody. Well, okay. Was, I thought we were going to run off the... But... Oh, you want to say... Oh, yeah. No, sure, I just want to sure. say a thank you to uh, Matthew Di Guglielmo for, to, uh, for his donation. My aunt, Jan, fellow Milan Club member, thank you very much for those uh, for the donation and for those nice pictures that you sent to us on the WhatsApp uh, message. We'll keep that between us. Very nice. Uh, and uh, since then... Yeah. Steve? Yeah. Is my that wife. Your wife donated? Yes. So she wants to see you shirtless, shirtless when she can see you shirtless for free. She's paying for it even though she can get it for free. There we go. There we go. So thank you guys very much for everybody. And I think that makes it 700 bucks if I'm not mistaken. I will, my aunt made it at 680 Uh We were at uh, $680 right now. No, we're at six. I think I think it's got an update. But yeah. guys, thank you very much for all that. We gr- gr- uh, greatly appreciate it. And um, before... Before we get into it, before we introduce our, our guests, yeah. right? Uh, we were at uh, we were at the, the uh, at the bar. Yes, at church I was on uh, on Sunday watching the game. Uh, Milan Legends was there, and he has a little a little feedback for us. Oh, okay. Milan Legends wanted to know uh, what happened to the social media launch. He likes to get a shout out, uh, Milan Legends. So, Milan Legends, the social media lounge people is open to all. But we're going to maybe do a special show during the, like the you know the two weeks break. Maybe we're going to do a social media. Milan Legends, you know, we're going to answer your question. Guaranteed. Over there. Guaranteed. And I loved how we had, you know, Jan was there and then we had Tommy. Of course. Tommy, Tommy. Tommy, Tommy. Tommy, we're talking about, you know, Gattuso and the Ibras. And he comes out of nowhere and he's like, when Saki was there, we need to go back to the Saki days Saki. when they did a partitella with no balls. Tommy's the best guy. Yeah. He's the best because he brings it back to the to, to the classic and everything. But always a great time. Uh, always a great time when we're watching uh, uh, at Church Arrows. And we're gonna get into that game. But before we get into that game, Steve, we we have a guest. This yes, week sir. That is a fellow Milanista around the world. Forza Milan! Right now it's like uh, noon. Where is that? Boom. Another guy that actually contributed a <clears throat> one of the big amounts for, and we thank him very much. And Presidente was a bit was a bit worried. Yeah, he was a bit worried that you would screw up his name. Guaranteed. And I believe is Carame- Caramelas Car- uh, D- Daniel. Daniel. How about we go with Daniel from uh, Milan Club Sydney? Daniel, are you there with us? Yes, we can hear you. And you know what? Even though Steve is going to butcher it, give us your proper pronunciation of your name. Caramelize. Caramelize. It's a Calabrese. He's, Calabrese. From, he's from the south. He's from the south from over there. So um, thank, you for, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, taking the time. And uh, we'll just like... No, and, and take the time right now to, if you want to plug yourself, you know, your Milan Club Sydney. Why don't you tell us about you know Milan Club Sydney, Milan Club Melbourne? Is there is there some heat over we there? We want to know. We want to know the dirt. You, the dirt, and we want to know how you became a Milanese. Yes. Well, we, we love Milan Club Melbourne. That's one of our very close mm. friends, and we call them cousins. So we love them very much. Um, we um, here here in uh, Milan in Sydney. Um, we started the Milan Club Sydney about five six years ago now. Um, I'm actually not the president. Uh, our 
president is the um, is called the um, AC Milan Godfather, and his name is Antonio Yenko. Um, I'm the club secretary at the moment. So um, yeah, we started the club um, to kind of gain interest here for uh, Milan here in Australia. Um, I actually have an Italian and Greek background myself, so uh, my last name is actually Greek. Whoa, whoa, um, whoa, whoa, Daniel, Daniel, I'm gonna stop you there. I'm gonna stop you there. Please tell me that you get to have a panini one day and a souvlaki another day. Me, that's good. That's like paradise. Paradise. I do. I do. It is paradise. It, yeah, it's amazing. Um, but uh, my love for uh, Milan in Biazzuri is definitely there. Um, and um, so, yeah, we created the Milan Club Sydney here in Australia to, to gain interest in, in Milan and, and uh, have our own little family here in Australia. Um, so part of the things we do is we, we, we show live games. Um, unfortunately for us, here they are sometimes at 2.30 in the morning, uh, 4.30 in the morning, 5.30 in the morning, and um, then sometimes you will still have them at 10.30 at night. So we're very lucky to have some great venues here in Australia that let us um, get together and show the live games. Yeah. Um, we also, every now and then, play a live um, a fan game against other uh, clubs here in Australia. Um, I won't mention um, one of them. Uh, they wear black and white. They're insignificant, but um, we, we, we play them every now and then, um, and we have a little charity event with them as well. So, um, yeah, that's what we kind of do here. We're here to create a family for everyone here in Australia, and um, we are growing, yeah, we're growing the club all around Australia. We've um, got the Melbourne guys on board, and they're really great. They're doing a fantastic job. Um, I'm sure to say better than us. Um, and yeah, we're, we're hoping to have a, a club in every state here in Australia. That's awesome. That's yeah, awesome. if you guys if you guys haven't figured out, he's from Australia. Yeah, I was gonna be probably screw up because you know. And by the way, for anybody that's watching on YouTube right now, uh, let me let me let me redirect this over here. That is a box of a panettone that's blocking Steve right now because the panettone is holding the phone that we're recording right now. Uh, with, it's a real it. Italian mic stand. Yeah, it is. You can't get better. What do you think? We're going to go spend money for a mic stand? No way. No, we're, we're not spending money for that kind of stuff. If we buy a mic stand, people, we eat it after. Exactly. So uh, let's uh, let's take it directly to... Because, uh, you know, we played the Torino on Sunday. A lot of us were having a lot of high hopes. You know, Roma dropping points in the worst kind of ways. Yeah. But, you know... Inter dropping points, a lot of dropping points, and then we're like, okay, you know, and what we're gonna get into it. But you know what? I can't say anything because you 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 bought me this table, so thank you. But Steve, Steve, I want to remind everybody. I want before we get into the presidential points with Daniel, you last week to put us in the perspective of the presidential points. You said I'm gonna give him this one because he was trying to put himself over. That you had a surprise yeah. in mind. And that, can you please, Daniel for sure wants to know. Of course, everybody how, wants how to know. How did the, the president get into this, you know, the presidential points this week? Okay, so Daniel, you know our climate here in Canada. Uh, we're usually in the minuses this time of year, so we kind of stay in uh, quite a bit. We do venture out from time to time, but Presidente, this week, coming up with the presidential points... He decided to stay in. So again, we're bringing back the leather futon chair. Yes. Okay. Maroon color. Maroon. Yes. Uh, not plastified. Not no, no. This is one that he uses all the time. Okay. He sits down and he has okay. his his turntable on. Okay? okay. Yeah. And on the turntable, he's playing himself some music. Okay. Now, Presidente, he goes and he plays. He plays the music, people. He plays. He's playing Ricky Poveri. Really? Sarà perché ti amo. Emozione. And he has the he's got the headphones on, right? Because the muffs. The first lady cannot be disturbed. No, no, obviously. Right? Cannot be disturbed. Perché ti amo. Il ritmo e sta me più vicino. And now as he's dancing. The, the points, the are, points are just coming to him, Daniel. They're just one after the other. It's like, wow, Daniel, I cannot pronounce his last name. He's going to be incredibly impressed with us. 
is in them. You see, and Daniel has no no problem believing the story. But at this point, is he is he scratching the disc? Is he, he does to not scratch. No, 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 he, he does not scratch. scratch. He, he does not scratch. scratch. Oh, sorry, I got a little... That's it. I got a little... That's it. So, uh, after listening to this beautiful 1980s uh, pop uh, hits from uh, from Italy, um, and I love how this panettone is just blocking you, but w- w- yeah. y- y- you're still there. Let's take it over to point number one, right? Um, actually, before we get into the point, let, let's talk very briefly about the game, because these are points on the game. Look, guys, uh, first half was uh, so-so. Uh, we had most of the chances. Donnarumma stood on his head, guys. Uh, a couple of those shots, it's like, uh, on one point, it's like, was that really a great save or was that really a missed shot? Uh, in the end of the game, we had the most chances, but that time with, where Cutrone missed that golden chance, I, w- I looked at everybody, I'm like, guys, we're not winning. I didn't say we were going to lose, I go, we're not winning this game. We had way too many chances. Steve, were you were you disappointed from what you saw on the pitch, knowing that everybody dropped points, or... I'm not going to say happy with a point, but Torino's been playing fantastic in the last, you know, couple of weeks. But it just seemed, it just seemed that they took their couple of chances in the first half. Yeah. We stood, uh, like I said, Donnarumma stood on his head, but were we missing that? Yeah. That what do you say? We were missing that final touch in the final third, right? Oh, we got we got background noise there. Daniel's got uh, the uh, he's got the people over there. Maybe they, okay. part. Maybe they, Maybe they heard the Rike Pobre and they said, you know what? Let's get in this. Let's get in this with Daniel. Because guaranteed he's not on a regular podcast. That's for sure. But uh, Steve, what did you think about the game? I know you couldn't join us, but uh, what did you... Uh... Look, guys, uh, I, I follow social media. You know me. I love, I love getting everybody's perspective. For me, I'm just... I am a bit disappointed, you know? Yes, we are in fourth. Uh, yes, everybody dropped points, but that killer instinct is missing from this team. Yeah, these are the times where we need to create that gap, whether it be three points from Lazio, one point behind Inter, where we could play a little bit more at ease. Yeah. This team, unfortunately, mentally suffers a lot. A little cushion would have helped us, it definitely, it especially helped with us. the games that are coming. You, you, you know, it, it, would it be like the Abate playing a, another fine game, Bakayoko again having a fine game? But Daniel, let me ask you this: um, in a um, in a time where, let's say, uh, uh, the year last year, the year before, where in every situation where everybody lost points and we had the opportunity to win back points. Being the way we are this year, were you also disappointed that we didn't make up any points against Torino? Or were you like, okay, you know what, It's with the team that we had, we couldn't ask for more? I was actually of that opinion. I think um, I was actually not happy with the draw, but happy with the fact that we didn't crumble. And um, in the past years, I think we would have crumbled. Um, we held ourselves, the back line were pretty strong. There were a couple of instances where we were getting... Overrun on the left wing, Tanner Loglu, I think, probably could have done a little bit better. Um, but when Castellero came on, the whole, whole team changed. I think it was a very positive ending to the game. We missed a couple of, you know, um, good chances at the end. But I was overall actually quite impressed with how we held ourselves. And, you know, we spoke about Castellero last time that, you know, it was more of a... Uh... Uh, you know, we didn't know what to expect of him. Like, you know, he's, he's a wild, a wild thing, and, and now it paid off. But yeah, there was a, definitely a lot of chance in there. And Chalonoglu, guys, it's, it's. But I don't know. Like, he, that, he, let's 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 be straightforward here. That Castillejo for Chalonoglu, yeah, happened ten to fifteen minutes too late. A hundred percent. And uh, I don't know if if if. if if Gattuso, like, he, obviously, you know, he's got talent, but he's dealing with some stuff, and you know, deal with your stuff on on the outside. But in the end, the, the, this was an, uh, a golden opportunity, Steve, to it, be a point behind Inter, and and unfortunately, like, you know, we didn't lose, like, you know, we didn't lose the game. But in the end, at home against Torino, yes, they've been in fine form, but we should have won that. We sh- we should have won that game. And I know we have, you know, Bologna but believe going up. Let's and... give credit because Torino had a good game too. Yeah, no, no, 100%. It was a 0-0 game where the momentum was was kind of flip-flopping between the two teams. So Torino didn't come there to park the bus. They brought it to us. What aggravates me the most is, you know, we've said it multiple times, Daniel, you listen, everybody else who listens. I've always said from Donnarumma, sometimes I need I need him to make that save. That save, which is a difference between a 1-1, a 1-0, a 
a two one, a two two. We we got that save. We got, we, that, we save got that save and we were from able to pick up. Don Donnarumma, but the rest of the guys unfortunately could not have buried that chance. Yeah. We need Iguain to be better, we need Cutrone to be better, but these guys need service, guys. They did not get any service. I looked, I looked like Kessie was completely uh, invisible this game, and it seemed like he was more axed on, on the defensive side. And, and Bakayoko, once again, having a great game. Uh, I don't know if uh, I know those guys in uh, in uh, Dublin saying they were gonna buy shots for everybody if he scored, but uh, he did get. I don't know if he got player of the game again, but in the end, uh, everybody's a little disappointed. But considering the fact of where we are, team wise and injury wise, we can't complain that much. And this was Giorno di Paqueta. Paqueta was there, and uh, he starts us off with a tie. So we'll see what uh, he, he did. The medicals today, he passed. He, did. he went to La Madonnina. He went to La Madonnina. Everything's good. So uh, let's take it over to the presidential point, numero uno. Ba 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 boom. So Daniel, I'm gonna ask you first about the Mazzari being bitter. So Torino coach Walter Mazzari in the post-match interview said, "If we had scored in the first half, we would have won that game." His question is: This a bitter remark? Be better left unsaid, since you don't know how Milan would have reacted once scored upon, or do you agree with Mazzari that Milan would have uh, lost? So Mazzari would be. He didn't pull the uh, the, the the watch. Uh, okay. thing. What do you think about all this about Mazzari's uh, comment today? Well, I, I think he's been definitely bitter, but at the same time, I, I, I see a bit of truth to his comments. I think um, we've been this season a number of times in the league, and the minute we've considered goals, we've uh, tended to fall apart a little bit. Um, a good example was against Napoli. We were two 0 up. They scored one, and then the second one, and then we just to sleep so um, I think that's happened a lot to, to us this season and um, but again you can't tell, you don't have a crystal ball you don't know how they would have reacted if they would have scored but um, judging by that I think yeah I, I actually I don't know I, I feel that those comments weren't you know they, they were bitter but then again there was some truth behind it and it's it's Mazzari right Steve do we no, have no, this, this guy here Mazzari uh, he, he's something else there like I gave him all the credit here I said he a coach but have you been watching what has happened like the past 10 11 games you would have probably had a better chance of winning this game if Milan scored first because it would have been normal we would have conceded right after yeah that's that's a good, that's so, a good point his comments are, you know, we were going to score first and we were going to win the game. Uh, no, Mazzari, because we always let people score first and we end up winning the game. We let Parma score first, we won the game. Hey. So I don't know if you watch Giusto del Go, I don't know, Novantesimo Minuto, if he, he can catch it in Torino if they have that. See the or, they, or in Torino, there's only Juve TV. I would, I would almost be surprised that he doesn't even get those channels. But honestly, like... Uh, to be bitter, this is a basically, I don't like to be robotic, but you can't say, Mazzari, we would have won the game. It was a game where it was gonna, it was bound to be finished, finished as a tie. And just, just some sour apples from, from Mazzari. And, and again, why are we putting this much attention on Walter Mazzari? But he's, he's a character, not to the level of, uh, you know, the, 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 the premier coach of the Serie A, but he, he, he's, still, he, he's still a character. Um, chapter, chapter number two according to the President, is uh, Gattuso compar uh, comparison. Gattuso said a year ago we would have lost this match. We were solid. We suffered both. Also, didn't, um, didn't let Torino do much in open play. His question, the numbers say this. After 14 rounds, Milan has, scored fi uh, has five more points than last season. Do you agree with Gattuso that this year's team has more fight in them compared to last year and know how to suffer when the team, when the going gets tough? Steve, to this question, right? Let's, let's take you back. Steve Polillo. And Daniel, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Four or five weeks ago, when we got all these injuries, tell me the truth. Were you expecting Milan to be still in fourth spot? I'm not saying comfortable lead. No. But do you think that this kind of team last year would have lost? Do you see that... Do we Are we giving more than we would expect? The players that are playing are giving more. The fact of the matter is, and the truth, which everybody's going to get a little bit pissed off about, is unfortunately we can't take it to that next level, even with the injured players. We're not as deep as a Juve, we're not as deep as now, magically, under Sari, Napoli didn't seem deep. Yeah. Under Ancelotti, magically everybody's deep. Even the snakes are deep. 
And that's what it comes down to. And, and, go, and, look at, and, and you know what? That's what it is. One, two, three. Because they're so deep. They could afford an injury. They could afford... Now, what happened to Milan? I'm not saying if it would have happened to Napoli or it would have happened to uh, Inter. They would have either had the depth to keep in play, but it shows that the depth is there. For us, the depth, unfortunately, is not there. Now, we're getting a magical performance by Abate. We're getting a magical uh, performance by Zapata. I would never have thought that. I would have never Bakayoko. came on this show. Bakayoko has turned back into the Bakayoko of Monaco. Not the Chelsea one, the Monaco one. Yeah. Again, I apologize. He's doing, he's doing his job. Unfortunately, now, we're not getting it from the starters who are not injured. Iguain's not scoring. Cutrone is not scoring. Suso took a day off against Torino. Suso has, like, you know, there was that one point where Iguain was wide open. I mean, Suso was wide open with Iguain, and then he didn't see him or whatever. But Suso, uh, uh, several times, trying to do everything by himself. But uh, to you, Daniel, would this team... This team, would they have lost last year or are they doing better than expected right now with all these injuries, according to you? I, I believe that this team is doing an extremely good job with what we've got. Um, I think the injuries played a big role in where we are. But then again, if you told me, as you said, five weeks ago, what do we be for? I would have said no chance. But they have, in a way, there, there, there is a resilience there that we, we did not see in the last couple of seasons since under Montella, uh, you know, if you want to keep going back that far. So there's a good sense of resiliency and the players that have been pulled into the team, like Akiyoko and, and all them, have definitely um, improved in the last couple of weeks. So I, I'm pretty confident that we will keep just growing and uh, hopefully when we get our starting 11 back and um, we are looking a little bit more solid, um, we, we, we continue to push a bit harder. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's and to said. touch and to touch a little bit on Suso. Yeah. Suso complained that Iguain didn't see him when he was all alone. But how many times did he didn't see all the other players when he was all no, by himself? I get it. I get it. Iguain is a striker. He's going to shoot. He wants to score. The next time down the field, though, Iguain did see Suso. Yeah. And he he rolled it? a ball to, to Sirigu. He rolled it. He didn't even take a shot. He rolled it. So, buddy, Suso, unfortunately, when Higuain is in the box or near the box, with the minimal service that he has, unfortunately, he's going to take the shot. Yeah. So, get used to it. Exactly. So, um, let's take it over to uh, point uh, Point number three and four are kind of all connected. It's talking about new blood. It's talking about uh, Gazidis and the new head, uh, head of scouting, uh, Jeffrey Moncada. Uh, let, let's go with this. Steve. Let's say from Gazidis, expect, expectations from Gazidis and this new uh, scouting, uh, saying that he wants to discover new talents uh, before signing uh, guys that are you know proven. I know that Gazidis is uh, known at Arsenal for always promoting one guy uh, from the youth team. But first, if I would have to, part one, what do you expect from this guy? And in the end, like even this this new uh, this new scouting uh, guy, right? Who's going to be taking? Is going to be taking direction from Gazidis? In the end, what do you expect from this guy Gazidis talking about a new Milan uh, stadium, uh, talking about Ima is not coming because uh, his agent fees are too expensive? W w so far, what do you get from this guy? I get that uh, he's a businessman. He is the CEO of Milan, the company. Yeah. I would like him to stay as CEO of Milan, the company. Control my finances. I don't mind the comments of, you know what? I can't sign Zlatan because not only is it going to cost me $4 million for six months, but I'm going to have to pay like $250,000 to uh, Rayola because his fees are too much. These are things that we don't know. Uh, he's got, he's we got don't the know. business sense behind He, he right? has the business sense and he's, it seems like he's transparent. Yeah. Because we would have not known that. We know that there's fees that exchange themselves. We don't know how much these fees are. Will they put Milan in a bad spot? He, I want him to control the finances, and and not only not only that, the Steve that he he doesn't know one hundred percent what that fine is going to be from from the UEFA, right? They could be, we ever what between five and seven, who knows? But him, he's in a position. Why would take a chance? If it's five and seven, Vinny, there's no way. There's not that there's no way. I don't want to hear about oh we're in trouble. 
No, five and seven million from the garbage that we've come out from, where our owner is a blessing. Is a blessing. Yeah. Five and seven. If they said it's similar to the punishment of Inter, let's go with it. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It doesn't stop them. You gotta buy and sell. You and I have no choice to buy and sell. We cannot keep the Bertolacci's. We cannot keep the Jose Mauri's at this point. I'm okay with that. Borini, we keep, pero. We'll keep Borini. <laughs> but what is strange to me is that, yes, he names his, his scout. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that as well. Again, North American style, it seems like they're taking that, that model. Yeah. He wants his guy. That's okay. His guy has to, be, has to realize now, we're not an EPL anymore. The types of players that you're discovering who were good in the EPL might not be good in Serie A. That's the thing that scares me. If a Cristiano Ronaldo needed three, four games to adapt himself to Serie A, which is an elite player, you know. But so far, look, we're gonna trust. We're gonna trust his judgment. See where he goes. Uh, Daniel, in Australia, are the news the same thing? Like, what do you guys perceive of Gazidis? Do you see this as a new thing, or we're just gonna trust his word and go with what he says? interested to understand what his plan is now Nick it's again we're not in DPL so we have this option for the second team I want to see how he uses the second team because if that's what he wants to discover these these kids or these young talents are gonna need to play whether it'll be primavera or whether it'll be with the second team we'll see we'll see what kind of quality we'll, yeah go ahead And that's too, and that, and that's a, it's a, it's a fantastic point there, uh, Daniel, as well. If he's gonna go this direction, it's gonna be positive, right? It's gonna be positive for Milan itself, you know. Uh, instead of splashing the cash of thirty million to buy someone who was discovered by someone else, we're discovering them before. I just, I just don't want to become Arsenal. But but I don't want to finish that, fourth all the time. In the end, in the end, I'm gonna leave you guys off with this before we move on to the next point. This plan is a good plan, but are we three to four? Excuse me, three or four years, six to seven years too late, where we got rid of eight senatori and we should have been like you know discovering these youth players. Hopefully, hopefully it's not a, a it, it's not a reboot for Milan that we have to get back to square one. I think we're. Right now we're at square two, square oh, three. No, 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 no. It's a reboot. It's a complete reboot. We never had this before. We've only had Cutrone and Calabria come up from the from the Primavera. Donnarumma? We, we, and Donnarumma. Donnarumma is a freak of nature. Yeah. At 16 years old, you're not going to get a lot of 16 years old from the Primavera. So it's a, it, it's, it's a diamond in the rough. Basically, we need a team to tidy us over until these youth players become... 100%. But again, again, I'm going to repeat it. I'm all for him in terms of finances, what he did with Arsenal to get them in the plus, 
to become a, a, an organization where you're always in the, in the block, I'm okay with that. That's going to be something that revolutionize Italy to the, to the max. Don't start talking about new, new stadiums. This is not the no, Highbury and replace it with the Emirates. No, 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 no. no. This is Italy. This is Milan. We are not Arsenal. We win Champions League. We win Scudetto. Not, that's what we do. Not in a while, but not in a while. But that's what I want to do. That's why the games against Torino frustrate me to the max, where I want to take the table and throw it to the wall. But uh, at least his respect for Milan it came through, like his, his live video and everything. So at least that... that In Italian, might... I have no problem with yeah. that. That's all the perfect stuff. That's all marketing stuff. I'm okay with that. My message to him, and if I would meet him, I would tell him, thank you, put us in the black, but we are not Arsenal. We want to win. The fan base here wants to win. Cinquant'anni di Curva Su. Cinquant'anni. 50, 50 years. years of a fan base... Screaming for this red and black, we don't want to finish fourth anymore. I'm not happy with fourth. I'm not Roma. I'm not Napoli. I'm sure as hell not Inter. Uh, we're Milan. Oh, what? You don't get. Uh, you don't go down. You don't go up two men and uh, get the game tied against. This the is Cagliari. karma, my friend. Yeah. It's karma because the Roman fans, when Milan was down, everybody was like, hey, hey, Milan, oh, finish. You want nothing, Roma fans. You want zero. Now you flipped, you flip flop. We're the ones who are in fourth, and you're giving away two away goals. Exactly, exactly. So, <laughs> uh, Steve, that's a, <laughs> that's a shot to uh, maybe you, uh, Vinny Gattuso, but you know, we love you, uh, even though you're a Romanist. Chapter number five uh, uh, the Italian Super Cup and Coppa Italia. The league announced that Milan will go on the road to face Sampdoria on January 12th for the Coppa Italia, and four days later, play the Super Cup final against Juventus on January 16th. No time to rest. We'll face uh, Genoa on January 20th, making it three games and eight days for Milan. To you, Daniel, I'm going to ask you first a question. Would you be okay with Gattuso making a sacrifice uh, to rest the regular starters for these two games so they can focus on the league matches? Or would you go Would you go uh, tutta forza and try to win that Supercoppa? But don't, I think it's going to be challenging. But don't you have that 4 nil loss still? Like Now, if you saw the video, you would see it. You got it right over here. Right over here. Right in like the throat. A, the right throat. in the throat. Like, do, do you not want to... I'm not saying embarrass Juventus, because let's be honest here, but don't you want to go win that Super Copa just to, you know... I would love to. Yeah. It would be a dream. And we watched the Copa with the Juventus Club all together in the same room. And uh, it wasn't fun. And it was peaceful. Uh, <laughs> Well, with the rumors uh, today, uh, Daniel, it seems uh, uh, it seems like Quagliarella might be on the other side of the fence. He might be with us uh, when we when we face Sandoria and the, uh, the Coppa Italia. But look at this, guys. For me, Coppa Italia, scrap it. And I will play the Primavera, the Super Cup. I want to win. I, I I think I would. Uh, yeah, I think because the Coppa Italia would be nice to do. You know, we always reach the kind of the finals, whatever. But not the Super Cup because. Yeah. It's against Juventus, and guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it that one game that you... Yeah, you know what? If the ball turns right that night, it, it can go our way, and it's like that one-off, yeah, right? It's a one-off. You know, the Serie A, you have the Ritorno, and, and then it's like, yeah, we love playing Juventus, but <clears throat> we know that we ain't battling for Scudetto, right? <clears throat> We're, we ain't gonna be putting too many sticks in Juventus' uh, wheels, but the Supercoppa, you know? But uh, to, to let go, you would just screw the Coppa Italia, you would just play the youngsters. It's too hard. We need someone's help. I, I cannot, I, I don't think my health can survive a tripleta, you understand? Yeah. It, it will not survive. I won't survive. So someone's going to have to win this Coppa Italia. So. Or the Scudetto. Or the Champions League. So I'm kind of hoping that that happens in the Supercopa, that we do lift and uh, 
period of time. So it's, it's very challenging. This is where the players, they need to prove to us that that's why they're professionals and that's why they get paid for what they pay. It's not yes. like they're playing three games three games every eight days every single week. So they're professionals and they're paid to be. They're paid to be, not that they pretend to be. Um, chapter number six, guys, this Thursday, Europa League uh, preview. So Milan will advance with a draw or a loss by a single goal versus Olympiacos while getting eliminated by any loss or two games or two goals or more. The question, given Milan's lackluster performances in Europa League so far, how confident are you about them advancing out of the groups? Steve, are you even worried? Uh, I never know which Milan's going to show up. The, the, I remember you using Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, kind yeah. of. Like, you used to use that for Lazio, but now, like, and that's going like, to become Milan. This like, is who, the Milan. Which Milan are we going to get? The Europa League, I want to go as far as possible. It's not a lot of money, but it if, proves. If, if fourth place gets congested yeah and we make some kind of miracle run in Europa League it's another entrance into Champions League yeah that for me is like a little eye on the prize there right it's a trophy yeah okay you're gonna play the winner of the the Champions League if you win it now please people are gonna say oh this guy thinks that Milan's the best team in the Europa League no no but we saw Marseille get to the final in the last Don't year. tell me Milan's not better than no. Marseille. And we saw and we saw last year when we played Arsenal. It was a it was a very big eye opener to say, okay, we're not at the level that one. And Arsenal wasn't playing their their, their top uh, players. That was then. the game at San Siro where Gattuso botched it. Yeah, Arasu were still in the game. But we need we need to get, make it. And close. Danny Walbeck flopped. Uh, Daniel, do you do you see us uh, passing Europa League? And uh, if if so, uh, how far are we going? Yeah, and, and look, we were just talking about it before. We, we, we've we discovered another center back in Abate. Zapata seems to be having a good time uh, now when people are injured. We need to create some sort of depth where we can play them in the in the, in the Coppa Italia. We can use them in Europa League to continue to advance. I agree, and this is what I've actually said to other people as well. I've started this injury, this injury period, even though it's, it's been at a for us is to let other players to kind of grow with the team and give us in a, in a sense some form of depth so when we actually have to perform like we have to perform in the Coppa Italia Super Coppa and then in our Serie A game um, in, in, you know, in close succession or we have to go and play we go really far in the Europa League we've got players like Zapata who can, Zapata who can definitely come in and um, gel with the team Zapata. and play in a 3 or 4 Zapata. Definitely, that's a good point. You know, maybe discovering what kind of depth we have uh, and and to play these yeah. teams. But uh, you know what? Even the Europa League, if we make it as far, I think one of the big takeaways from there was putting ourselves back. And guys, I'm not saying in the level of where we were before, but you know, people people talking about Milan. Oh, Milan's in the semifinals. Milan's in the quarterfinals and getting back to the top of the world where we belong to be. Um, that was uh, our final. Uh, presidential point but uh, Dana before we let you go uh, give us uh, again we're going to thank you uh, once again for money that traveled uh, they traveled the Pacific went all the way got to Vancouver traveled yeah. all the way to another bank of Yamaja thank you for all of that and uh, give us uh, where we can find the Milan Club uh, Milan Club uh, Sydney your Twitter handle and the Godfather, the I believe. Godfather. I want to give him a hug. I want to give him a the hug. The Godfather. He's, uh, he's video like, hug. But he's, video hug for the Godfather. But is he like a president that he's obscure? He no, 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 no. The Godfather is smooth and silky. Smooth and silky. But he doesn't want to do the podcast. He doesn't want to do it. He's not comfortable. Okay. No, I understand. You know, I got President respect. Marcello, him, he says he's not comfortable. Then he goes on then CFMB. Then and by the way, everybody loved your imitation of Marcello's voice. Everybody was having a good time. You see? I but got it down pat. But uh, yeah, give us uh, give us all your plugins. Time to put yourself over there, uh, Daniel. Yeah, so we're on Facebook. That's our primary point of contact. So 
Club City. You can find that quite easily. Um, yeah, and um, Antonio, he would love to have um, come on. Um, he's uh, you know, a great president and um, he's, knows, he's like the Malay Encyclopedia. That's how I, I kind of refer to him. He's uh, been following Malay for over 50 years, all his life. And um, yeah, he's our encyclopedia, so if anyone needs to know anything about Milan, you can definitely ask Tony. Um, and um, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a great club here. We're, we're all, and everyone is welcome. So anyone that comes to Sydney, um, you know, um, link up with us and we'll love to have you at our live game. Um, and just the, the difficult thing here in Australia is the games are at, um, you know, at very difficult times, um, but we, we do try. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Uh, so follow us on Facebook, uh, Milan Club Sydney. And, um, yeah, if you're ever in Australia, feel free to um, come and visit us uh, here in Sydney or our Milan Club Melbourne or, or any other clubs that we're, we're going to start to slowly start to create very soon. Nice. Thank you, Brad. Nespresso prima della partita. And, uh, and the, the, the world's most dangerous continent, the animals or their snakes. Yeah. There's guaranteed the I'm getting, getting, guaranteed I die. Guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. We're getting I killed five snakes this morning, and I, I, I fed my kangaroo, and um, and now we're uh, we're playing with the koalas. So we do this every day. <laughs> what did he say? He had interistes in his backyard. Yeah, he got he had snakes. snakes. He had snakes. Well, a lot of them. Yes, we have to kill them all the time. They're, they're, they're very bad. J I guess just the way us Canadians live in igloos and have polar bears as, uh, yeah. as neighbors, right? <laughs> Well, Daniel, thank you very much for taking the time. I know it's at least it's early morning for you. See, us, we're taping on Monday, but for Daniel, it's Tuesday. It's yeah. Tuesday. He's having lunch. Monday. He's, He's having lunch. lunch. No bello lunchtime. It's Daniel. Beautiful. No panino. No. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, and say salute, salute to the Godfather. And, uh, you know what? The Godfather's going to be listening. We're talking. Ah, ah. Salute. Maybe once uh, in a brach, you know, a bello salute. A bello. Video hug. Daniel, thank you very much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll make sure that we plug you on when we when we uh, put this on on the air uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. All the best, everyone. Forza Milan. Forza Milan. Ciao, Daniel. So now we're gonna put out people. Well, you put the live version. Yeah, of course, live, live. Now, guys. Steve, this is where, if you're just listening in and not watching, you don't understand what's going on. Okay, so Steve, last week, because as you guys saw, we need a stand to put the phone, because we, we can't figure it out. We need the stand. And Steve bought me a Dolce Delizie Pandoro. Now, Steve, I don't know if you knew, but let's just say yeah. you discovered this recipe. Yes. On, the, on the internet machine for pan, for panettone. No, no, hold. Can I finish? Yes. You just saw that it's a crazy thing to do French toast with this. Boom. Now, put yourself in perspective. Explosion. You have one piece per la Madonna. Yeah. What happens if you have the whole panettone? Both to the arched. Now you're sitting on the couch. Acid straight through you're, your esophagus. You, 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 you. <laughs> You're opening up the pants and everything. And guaranteed you put the powdered sugar. Whoever says they don't put the powdered Who sugar... doesn't put the powdered sugar? They're lying. Now, would, as, you're, as you're, you know, opening up the pants, you got all this, this ach, and it's like, you know, the, the indigestion, you hear about Montella. Montella, that him, you know, that in the exact Presidente's words, it takes a bomb. By the way, I think this is the first word, the first time that the president uses um, blasphemy. It takes balls for Montella, who was fired twice in the same season by two different teams, to make comments about Gattuso's inexperience in Serie A compared to him. All this because Montella took exception for Gattuso, saying Milan's player were not in shape when he took over. Montella, what well, what have you done, with Montella? What are you, what are you so now you're, you're you're perceiving that oh, but Gattuso probably is taking shots at me, whatever. Montella, you gave us, you gave us a notch. But Montella, someone has to tell Montella that when he was at Sevilla, and the Derby de Sevilla, if I'm not mistaken, it's Real Betis. Yeah, when he lost what? what they happened? made a t-shirt thanking Sevilla for hiring Vincenzo Montella. Yeah. 
that's the I I I haven't seen it in Italy, so I tip my hat to them because that was fantastic. It's pretty funny. You can't Gattuso is inexperienced, yes, but we all know that. But you came in as experienced. The Milan faithful is not angry at Montello because of the result. The results have something to do with it, yes. What we didn't like is every time we laid a big fat egg and we sucked, you, you said that we played a good game. Where there's 50 a billion people who are watching the same game. And smiling. Don't forget about yeah, the smiling. And smiling while he said, well, we lost three points or we tied after we were winning. Whatever disaster we've been going through for the, the time that you were coach. That's why we're angry. That's why the indigestion is. Because as soon as I saw him, that's what I thought about. The smile on... Eh, mm. Amo bene, bene. Uh, ma, <laughs> ma, ma no, 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 zero. So, so it's like as you, as you're, 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 you're getting all this information, your stomach is grumbling, right? Your pants are open. You're having all this achita. You look over to your wife, your lovely wife. And you say, Sandy, honey. Make me a panini. No. <laughs> I love that. Dame no get, get the brioche from Ushtip. Dame no brioche. Right? I need to burp it up. Right? Not a brushki, a and, brioche. And now tell me, Steve. Tell me, Steve. What was it? Like, you know, because we're talking about being honest and not bullshitting uh, Milan fans. What was a great moment this week where Leonardo came out straight from? And now I don't know if it's true. I prefer him telling us the truth, right? Yeah. About saying, look, guys, until we get all this thing, Ibra, yeah, we can't cut. He's not coming back. He's not coming back. Maybe it's something to do with, you know, the whole fees. And maybe they're going to come back and say, we're going to cut the fees. Yeah. Maybe whatever. But it was a nice, refreshing a bit of information where they're actually telling the truth. Now, yes, we'll go back to our podcast last year where we were saying that we appreciated Fasone and Mirabelli coming out at the beginning of the season, really being truthful and uh, we thought we thought about the whole financial situation. But I think that the the moral of this, the moral of us being happy was be honest with us, right? Yeah. Just the way we were mad when. Milan got rid of all the senatori and not having a plan. Like, just tell us there's a plan and there was no plan. So, Steve, was this a good feel moment with Brioche of the week? Having Leonardo's like, hey, guys, you know what? Let me be straightforward. That was on live TV. Yeah. That was live. I watched the live thing and he uh, and I tweeted it out. He went to Galliani University. But he puts an honest spin on it. It's logical, guys. We're gonna get we're gonna get a sanction from the, the from with hundred percent. We're gonna be restricted in some way. Do you think the fund? I love to call them the fund. Cares about five to seven million dollars. They probably carry that around in their pocket. That's where we're at right now. They don't care about that. But unfortunately, UEFA will put restrictions on who we could buy. How many players hey, we guys, have on the well, bench? No, nothing to complain about. Yeah. Right? Because uh, we would have been out of the Europa League. So exactly. whatever they give us. But I think, I think Steve, the fact that whatever they give us, 5 million, 7 million tell me, uh, restrictions, is that we have a, a sound structure, financial structure, to say, not, not any sound st- uh, financial structure to say, yeah, yeah, we're just going to give you the money. It's like, okay, we're going to get the money from over here. We're going to get... Whether it be, you know, we're talking about Andre Silva, we're going to pay him, or we're going to take that money to pay Bakayoko. Uh, all, but I think they have the proper people in place. Gazidis being in place, having the track record that he has, right? There, there, there's no there, there's no way that UFO would, like, you know, not accept or say, okay, here's what we're going to do. And I have no problem with that. I would take that before, you know, being, being out of Europa League, especially when, when the team was not at fault. No, we're more manager. credible now. Yeah, we're, we're definitely... more credible now to, towards UEFA. UEFA also has a little bit of a juggling act to do. The the WikiLeaks coming out, uh, and it could change what they, they what they do. It could change in, in a way where mm, we might need to lay down the law, or it could be if we lay down the law with Milan, Will there be repercussions from Milan that could expose us to other things with Man City and PSG? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. 
they're not going to get away with that. If those things are true, and again, I'm, not, I'm just speculating here. I don't know if they're what true. Do know? They're probably true. Yeah. But they have a little bit of a juggling act. What do we do with this Milan now? Unfortunately, Milan's history with the Champions League, it's pretty heavy. That seven Champions League winner, seven time Champions League winner. And Manchester City, how many times have we win it? Zero. PSG. At zero. zero. Juventus. Two. Seven times lost. Seven times lost in the final. We have seven wins. So Guys, throw that out there. In the, in the end, in the end, I think uh, what it comes down to, whatever, we will get a penalty, rightfully so. After everything that came out, I we, we you know business wise, I think we have the the from what. From what we can see from the Gazidis, from what he's done, I think we have the right people in place. Yeah. We have sound management in the Maldinis, the Leonardos, the Scarones, and the Elliott Fund. And in the end, guys, even knowing that the Elliott Fund is there. And if you guys have ever seen, just YouTube this. The Elliott Fund, it's a 10-minute video, I believe, from Footy or something. Guys, it's a fantastic little documentary. 10 minutes, it explains to you really where... The Elliott Fund, the Vulture Fund that they are. But in the end, what I got from that uh, little documentary was they're not here to lose money. No. So they're here. They want to put a sound structure for the team. When the time comes, here's what we're offering you. Give us the money. Look, just take it and sail away. Yeah. Right? So uh, this, uh, I believe we're playing Monday against Bologna. We have, uh, yeah, no, it is, it is Monday because we're playing on, on Thursday. Friday, we got the Christmas get together, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, the holiday, holiday get, together. get together. And don't sing uh, "Baby It's Cold Outside" because people are th th getting offended. Um, guys, Saturday I will be uh, joining the Southside crew to go to the local Walmart to buy all the food. No, I will we, not be doing that. I said I will. Yeah, Steve. Steve is just giving us the money. He's just paying cash. And on Sunday, anybody that's around, we will be there. Cafe Southside, uh, bring your old toys, Jean cans, Jean Dallon, uh, and uh, it, guys, it's ten years in a row. It's it's for a great cause. Yeah, and Hope. you guys can still donate. You're not the GoFundMe page. You, you guys want to see there? me with no shirt? You want to see me with no shirt? I'll take it off right now. I don't care. Uh, it's just, no. well, it's just, let's just wait for my and. Uh, not that I regret, but. Uh, you know why I don't gamble anymore, Steve, right? Because uh, I'm a shkaron, yeah, right? Very bad. And when I told you, when you said a thousand dollars, and man, I'm like, but this guy doesn't understand. Like even a couple of hundred bucks is good enough. And when you said a thousand dollars, I'm like, okay, I'll go shirtless too. And what happens? Because I'm not shkaron, yeah, yeah, it's probably gonna happen. Sunday, we're looking at a beautiful minus one. Feels like minus eight, ladies and gentlemen. The nipples will be popping. <laughs> Ovunque e sempre. Forza Milan! Ciao guys.